Hello and welcome to my channel, Becoming Bev. In today's video, we're gonna talk about some van life basics, things that I've learned along the way and things that I think you should know if you're considering van life. For me, van life represents freedom and travel and adventure and also an experiment in minimalism. In a way, it's kind of an act of resistance of the status quo. You don't have to do life like everybody else does it. You can do life however you want. Sometimes it's about um, leaning into the unknown, you know, the kind of stuff that makes you feel alive. It's about meeting new friends and seeing what they're all about. And it's also about um, a commitment that I've made to myself about living life on my terms and living a life that I love, like creating a life that I love. And it's not about settling for the shoulds that other people try to push on you. You know the shoulds, you should be doing this or you should be doing that or you know, you should be at your day spa full time or you should be at the campground full time or you know how people are, you should be doing this, they should all over you. <laughs> So this is about shaking the shoulds and really asking what's meaningful for me. Now, definitely in van life, I think your mindset kind of dictates whether it's a good experience for you or not, whether it's an adventure for you or not. You really do have to remain open and kind of go with the flow and get used to like sudden changes, you know, you expect things to go one way and they don't, they go another way. You have to be open to new adventures and be in the moment and you make do with less and you appreciate the simplicity of that. It's also about uncertainty and not knowing, uh, which can both be exciting and terrifying. I've told the story you know, before I read on a Facebook group where someone wrote the comment, um, it's so hard for me not knowing where I'm going to sleep every night. And the flip side of that is it's so exciting not knowing where you're going to sleep every night. The uncertainty of it uh, is an interesting part of van life, like not knowing what's going to happen next. And when you get up in the morning, not knowing, you know, who you're going to meet or what you're going to do or what you're going to see, or again, where you're going to sleep that night. But for me, the not knowing makes me feel alive. It makes me feel present. One of the things about van life is your time is all your own. It's like your personal time, like you get to decide where you want to go and when you want to go and what you want to do and how much time you want to spend in the van or how much time you want to spend out of the van. You really do take ownership of your time and spending that much one-on-one -on -one time with yourself, you, um, you get to decide how I want to spend my time. For me, it's, it's easy because I'm a very social person. So I'm good at meeting new people. Not everyone is. And I love learning new things. So I love taking the time since I've done van life. I've got my drone pilot's license. I've got my scuba diving certification. Uh, I've learned how to do my YouTube channel. So I love having everything with me everywhere I go. And literally almost everything that I need is just right here within reach. You learn to love the simplicity of van life. It's sometimes in van life you're thrown into some interesting situations. But one of the things that I love about it is um, you can stay or you can go. So I've had situations in van life where I decide this is so cool. I think I'll stay here a while. Like when I went to Smith Falls, that was an exciting adventure for me. I wasn't planning on going there. I just saw a sign and took off that direction. And I ended up staying for a couple of days. I went rafting down the river. And so that was a place I wanted to linger longer. But there have been times when I wanted to go sooner. <laughs> I can remember one time I had my uh, my extension cord plugged in. The person's front porch receptacle wasn't working, so we had to plug it in the garage. And the garage door was down, and I got up that morning, and I'm like, you know what? I really want to go. Like, it, 
really felt like it was time for me to go. And I didn't have a way to get my extension cord out. So I just unplugged it from the van. It was just, you know, a $10 extension cord that I picked up. I rolled it up on the porch. I donated it to the person and I left. <laughs> so it really becomes a go with the flow type lifestyle. And van life can lead you to some fascinating places. It's led me to the Badlands National Park. It's led me to Yosemite. It's led me to Key West, to campgrounds and rivers and drives through Sedona and beautiful hikes. I love it when I wake up in the morning and I don't know what I'm gonna get to see and I love the saying, well, I didn't know I was gonna get to do that today or I didn't know I was gonna get to see that today. Van life enables me to be with friends and yet not be up in their space. <laughs> so I stop and I visit friends more often and they always ask me, do you want to come in and stay in our guest room? And I say, no, I'm really, really happy staying in the van. It's like I love my mattress. I love my linens. I love my own pillow. Pillows and guest rooms can be a crapshoot. <laughs> if I happen to wake up at five o'clock in the morning and I want a cup of coffee, I have everything right here. I'm not digging through their cabinets or worrying about waking them up. Uh, and I love not packing all of my stuff in and out, you know, kind of the same with hotel rooms, not lugging all your stuff in the hotel room and then back out of the hotel room and taking chances of forgetting stuff or leaving it behind. You literally have everything you need with you everywhere you go. Van life allows you some flexibility, like if the weather is too cold where you're at, you can typically just head south and go someplace warmer. If the weather is too hot where you're at, you can drive north, go someplace a little bit cooler. And in the van, you have the flexibility to do that. One of the things about van life is you spend a lot more time outside. For me, I look for hiking spots and rivers to explore. I look for beaches. Sometimes the van ends up just being a place to sleep. You know, it does take a bit of time when you get ready to go somewhere. You don't just jump in the front seat and drive away. There's some tidying up to do and just making sure you haven't left anything out that'll spill. I learned that the hard way with a cup of hot chocolate one time. That only took one lesson. So first thing in the morning, you can't really be in a hurry to go somewhere. And it takes a bit of planning, like where do I wanna go next? And is there anything particular particular that I want to see when I get there. I have a van event that I'm going to in Bevere, Missouri, the third week of May. And then my daughter's birthday is at the end of May. So I feel like I want to stay here for that. And then after that, um, I'm thinking I'll have some flexibility and I can really get back out on the road. I think I'm going to do Route 66. That seems like uh, something interesting to do and I'm excited about it. So Route 66 starts in Chicago and ends in California. Yeah. I think that I spend less money being in the van. And part of that depends on where you stay at night. Like, are you paying for campgrounds every night? Part of it depends on how much you're moving around. Like, how much gas are you using? But one thing I know for sure, I don't spend money on things I don't need when I'm in the van. <laughs> I don't go shopping for a bunch of new clothes. Uh, I don't buy trinkets or souvenirs. It's like... Literally, there's no room in the van for that kind of stuff. So you really have to get uh, dialed in and the things that you keep in the van are typically things that have multi-purposes and things that you absolutely need or might need. You do not have space for a bunch of useless things. In a way, van life forces you to kind of be content with what you have. I know from my past, you know, I'd go out shopping for things I didn't even need, clothes I didn't need, shoes I didn't need. Like I can remember, you know, looking in the closet one time and just wagging my head and going, what is the point of all this stuff? In van life, getting that dopamine rush from shopping isn't an option because you literally don't have room for it. So you find other ways to be happy uh, rather than getting that little rush from shopping. In van life, uh, I feel like I meet a lot more new people. I meet van life people like Dee and Johnny. If I want to be social and meet nomadic people with that same 
nomadic spirit that I have, you know, there are a lot of van life type get togethers to go to. And then, you know, my people who are passionate about their vans and love to talk about them are my vanner community. Then there's always random people that I meet along the way. You know, I think about time and I think time is our most valuable resource. And in a way, van life announces, you know, that I really get that, that time is my most valuable resource. Van life for everyone? No, absolutely it is not for everyone. There are definitely some inconveniences to van life. Uh, in my van, I have an outdoor shower. So if it's cold or if I'm in public places, I need to figure out that whole showering situation. Planet Fitness was a game changer with that. Uh, and then I did a whole video on different places to shower. So that's kind of interesting. The toilet can be a challenge. I have a cassette toilet, but if you're not comfortable with emptying a cassette toilet, if you're not comfortable with either needing to find a bathroom when you gotta go number two, if you don't think you could uh, go number two in a plastic bag and then toss it away at some point, then this is not for you. <laughs> if it's hard for you not knowing where you're gonna sleep at night, this probably isn't going to work for you. Some of the other challenges are like, where do I get my packages at? At times that takes a little bit of planning ahead. Like where am I going to be at in the next, you know, couple of days? Where can I have a package mailed to? Uh, cooking can be a little bit interesting. It hasn't been a huge challenge for me, but just figuring out, you know, things that you can eat that uh, you can either eat straight out of the refrigerator or for me, I just have the one little cooktop. So, you know, one pan type meals. And then there's always the planning and strategizing. That can be challenging for some people. You wake up in the morning and you're like, okay, where do I want to go? So for me, what I do is I, okay, I want to see certain things and I want to go a certain route, but I leave a lot of flexibility in those plans. Van life can be a bit of a challenge. Like if you take something out, you have to put it away. If you don't, your space becomes chaotic and cluttered, you know, pretty quickly. Early on, I was having to dig a lot of things out and I've dialed it in pretty well now where I don't have to dig things out much. <laughs> There's kind of two modes of travel for the van. So there's like the mode when you're still, and then there's travel mode. So you have to be really careful about battening down the hatches and, you know, checking the outside. I um, accidentally one time pulled away with the van still plugged in. <laughs> I didn't mention that before, did I? <laughs> <laughs> I put different flooring in the van because I felt like it was dirty all the time. So there is that constant tracking in of gravel and mud and dirt and sand. Van life, my feet are dirtier than they used to be in normal life. So just keeping your feet clean so you don't get that dirt and stuff in your bedding and your linens. Another van life challenge is the temperature. If you're someone who needs to set that thermostat on 72 degrees in order to be comfortable, this probably isn't going to be your thing. <laughs> I've done the best that I know to do, you know, to solve this. So I have my O Polar fan. I have my Max Air fan. I also have an air conditioner for when I'm plugged in. I have a couple of different ways to heat the van. Sometimes it's just a matter of turning the van on and turning the heater all the way up. I have electric blankets. Um, I also have a little space heater that I use, but it does get warmer in here than what I'm used to. And sometimes it gets colder in here than it would if you were in a sticks and bricks house. Another challenge about van life is you are going to have breakdowns. You are going to have repairs. I had a fuel leak in Atlanta, Georgia. My air conditioner went out while I was in Colorado. I got stuck in the mud in Texas and I had a flat tire in Missouri. So I do think it's important to get AAA. I've used it uh, three times already. When stuff like that happens, I look at it and I'm like, all right, well, this is an interesting problem to be solved. <laughs> And I have to say that I've had good luck. I've had really good luck with mechanics and I felt 
very taken care of. The mechanics were very fair with their pricing and actually uh, very caring and you know, making sure that I was all right and I had a place to stay. And okay, so just to go over some of the pros and cons that I mentioned during this video. Pros, every day is an adventure. You have freedom and flexibility to travel. It's a challenge that can lead to personal growth. You have more time to focus on new things and hiking and hobbies. If you do it right, you have the possibility to save money. You get to meet new people and have a new community of friends. And then the cons. It's not how it appears on Instagram. <laughs> it can be a lot of work just to maintain the lifestyle you're absolutely at the mercy of weather and temperatures. You will be exposed to new and uncomfortable situations. And for some people making it on the road, uh, you have to figure out how to hustle to make that income. The last thing that I wanna share with you guys is one of the comments that I'm noticing a lot in my YouTube feed is, you know, I'm too old for this, or I waited too long. And my thought about that is maybe you are, maybe you're not. I read something the other day and I'd like to share it with you all. So I feel like this is a really important reminder. Uh, I'm about to turn 60 in a couple of months and I have, you know, some mixed feelings about that. So I read this and it, uh, it helped me feel a little bit better and I want to share it with you. An extensive study in the USA found the most productive age in human life is between 60 and 70 years of age. The second most productive stage of the human being is from 70 to 80 years of age, and the third most productive is from 50 to 60. The average age of Nobel Prize winners is 62 years old. The average age of the presidents of prominent companies in the world is 63 years old. The average age of pastures in the 100 largest churches in the USA is 71. The average age of the popes are 76. This tells us in a way that it has been determined that the best years of your life are between 60 and 80. A study published in the New England Journal of Medicine found that at age 60, you reach the top of your potential and this continues into your 80s. Therefore, if you're between 60 and 70 or 70 and 80, you are in the best and the second best levels of your life. And this uh, source is from the New England Journal of Medicine. Sometimes people feel like at you know, this age, they're kind of winding down and at the end of their lives, I feel like at this age, the best is yet to come. So I will leave you with that note. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. You keep watching and I'll keep posting content.